want to welcome Wichita's own King Prodigy. He's our first artist we're interviewing here on King Brand TV. So let's give a warm welcome to King Prodigy. We'll, we'll give you some claps. We'll give you some claps. Hey, no, we'll you Somebody respect. gonna show some love. Hey, respect, respect, man. King Prodigy, major moves out now. Let me Google that. You ain't heard it. Cop that. You know what I'm saying? Major Moves is definitely a good cut on it. You know what I mean? It's about 14 bars, uh, 14 songs of fire. Shout out now, Spotify, Rhapsody, iTunes, all that. But we want to get to know the real you, and uh, you know, by doing that, we want to kind of start at the beginning. Could you tell us where you from? Man, where, <laughs> where am I from? I am from this place called Wichita, Kansas. We call it Dub K. I call it the right now for all this. Shout out to Wichita, 316, stand up. Okay, where I'm at. So you're born and raised Wichita, Kansas. Yes, sir. How, can you tell me how how was it for a young black man growing up in Wichita, Kansas? For the people out there who've never been to Kansas, you know, Kansas, we in the middle of the map. So, kind of give us an insight for the people out there who've never been to Wichita or Kansas. Man, I can't really tell you what it's like as a young black man in Wichita, Kansas. I can tell you what it was like for this young black man in Wichita, Kansas, though. I mean, I grew up, you know, in the 13th of Cleveland in the hood, the, about as hood as you can get. You know, you know you from the hood when your childhood home, you grew up there and got bullet holes in it. Got bullet holes in the window. That's how you know you're from the hood. Straight up. But we was like, from, we was from the hood, but we were like the richest broke niggas on the hood. Which means we had five hoopties in the front yard, but no food in the refrigerator. When I say no food in the refrigerator, we probably had like condiments, you know, like mustard, ketchup and shit. And then, uh, on top of that, the refrigerator had a lock on it with a chain, a chain of locks. So. <laughs> y'all had a y'all had a lock on the refrigerator. Yeah, lock on the refrigerator. But hard times, hard times got it tripping. Hard times. Is, is that because everybody just eating up? Yeah, so we had a big family and everybody was eating shit. Okay, eating you, shit and we was broke, poor. You you said you had a big family. Did you have both parents there? How many brothers and so, sisters did you have? I had three brothers, three sisters, two brothers, and two sisters stayed in the house. Okay, you know, including myself. So it was five of us with a single mom. You know, what I mean, none of my fathers was there. So. And my father used to be in and out, so yeah. we didn't really have a lot of help. So I hey, respect my mom for holding it down for what she did have. You know, because we had five cars. <laughs> we had five of them mugs, a truck, you know, a, few, a couple vans. So, straight up. Shout out to all the single mothers out there. Um, was it difficult growing up, you know, not having your father there, uh, you know, in and out? Nah, man, not really. Yeah, they say, they say you think it would be difficult because you're a statistic. But nah, man. It, how can it be difficult if you don't know, if you're not you don't know what it's supposed to be like to have your father there? So I mean, I know what it's like to have my mom there. You know, shout out to the strong black woman, man. You know, shout out to that. But I love my father, but I can't be upset about it. <clears throat> you know, sometimes I wish I was when I was younger. I was, but nowadays it's, I'm a grown man, so I understand what it is. But I personally won't do that if I had a kid. But you know, everybody's not meant to you know be in your life. Yes, and unfortunately, there's a lot of young black males out there with the same story or who definitely can relate to you. There's no such thing as a statistic. There's no such thing. As amen. That. Amen to that. Uh, earlier, I heard you mention you said your, your father passed away. Could you talk about how, how he passed away? Oh, man. Hey, he, truth be told, I don't personally even know to this day. I just know he ended up in Arkansas, in Arkansas River or Arkansas, Arkansas River is what we call it down here. He ended up there. He didn't have no water in his lungs. So... You tell me. <laughs> wow. I mean, that, that's an inter interesting story. Did they ever figure out what happened? No, nah, I mean, he was just another black man or what they call Negro on the streets. You feel me? He was in and out of jail. Did an 11 year bid. They didn't care. You know what I mean? They didn't care. They didn't, you know, right now, it's still an unsolved murder. Wow. You know, unsolved and, death or homicide, however you want to call it. And how old <laughs> were you when this happened? See, uh, well, two days after my 16th birthday. Wow. The cops knocked on my door. No uh, news to my mom. So. How, how did that affect you? Hey, that fucked the nigga up for real, man. I was out here drug banging, uh, game banging and drug fighting. I mean, straight up. You know, I heard putting it down. You know, I heard robbing. Well, I wasn't robbing niggas, but we were jacking gas cans out of, uh, you know, garages. Yeah. Jacking stores. Well, was some, like, Robin Hood shit. We were jacking them and giving them back, to, uh, selling them to play those closets to get gas money and shit. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Okay. Uh, that wasn't because of it, but shit, hey, at that point, fuck it. I was like, whatever. I'm doing whatever the fuck I want to. Could you kind of give us an idea of what kind of led you into music? Uh, you know, what influenced you to do music, and if there were any artists out there that influenced you personally? Man, I've been doing music probably for I've been doing it for about 22 years, man. It's my 22 year, 22nd year, 22nd year. I'm 29, so I've been doing this since I was seven. 
uh, growing up, man, I never was really into music. I used to always be into sports, like baseball, basketball. I, used to, I mean, I loved basketball. I used to be in the backyard shooting 100 shots before I go in type stuff. Every time I go in the house, man, from a session, I just hear my sisters or my brother, they'd be playing the legends. Like, my brother be playing Biggie, or be playing some Pac, or like the Nuts. Yeah, he used to play like Bone Thugs and Harmony, you know what I mean? Uh, my sister, she used to play like all the uh, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC. You saw us watch MTV, you know, Carson Daly. That's that's you know, that's the know, early two thousands, huh? Yeah, yeah, early two thousands. Yeah, yeah. different that. times. Yeah, even that in the like late nineties, you know, she's listening to the Spice Girls, <laughs> you know, shit like that. Britney Spears, one of those Britney Spears first came out. Yeah, you know, that video, but yeah, man, we just uh, I just started doing that, man, and then I got to fifth grade. I heard this uh, Tupac changes. <clears throat> Me and my friend Devin Marsh, we actually remixed that Tupac changes. The two uh, the. The changes song, yeah, you know that's a yeah, big song that's now. Changes, yeah. How how how'd that go? Our version was like I wonder if I still remember. It was like uh, I see no changes. All I see is racist faces, black and white, won't die tonight. It's something that's all I remember. But <laughs> yeah. hey, that was like fuck. When I'm 29, man, damn, that was about 20 years ago, man. Shit, I can't even remember, but uh, I know they was feeling that shit. But uh, after I dropped that, man, we did that. Uh, spit it for our homies. They was digging that shit, so I was like, you know what? Hey, you might have something. So with that, I just to uh, uh, dibble and dabble a little bit as the years went by. Can never rap on beat. I got to when I was 16 years old, man, coincidentally enough. Coincidentally enough, I got to when I was 16. And then that's when I started learning how to rap on beat. And everything started to make sense. And then I uh, hooked up with my homeboy, uh, John, called him Wiz. You know what I'm saying? He, could, he put me on the lyrics, put me on, introduced me to Nas, you know, Ken Al Bus. You know, I, I, I used to always listen to Jay Z back, kind of here and there. Or whatever, but he really put me on Nas for real. But uh, Illmatic, Stillmatic, man, it was written. Great artist. Yeah. Nas is a great artist. One of, one of the legends yeah. in the game. Cassidy, man, he used to be one of my favorite artists for the longest. Cassidy, uh, shit, man, he kind of fell off a little bit. But I still fuck with him. Oh, shit. My very first CD, though, I was, uh, incidentally enough, when I was in fifth grade, my homie James Broner gave me that Warren G. Regulator CD. Regulator, you know. For 80 men still on this property, we damn good too. Hey, shout out to Warren G for that, man. <laughs> I used to fucking put that record on repeat. West Coast legend. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I used to put that shit on repeat every day, man. My sister, she used to hate that. Every time we came home, man, I used to have that shit on. Because I didn't really listen to music, and when she did listen to music, they was playing that song and shit. So everybody knew that's some shit word for word. West Coast music definitely had a big impact on culturally, you know, on hip hop, and definitely changed the game. Uh, now, your name, King Prodigy, you know, as us as a brand, King brand, you know, we, we relate directly, you know, being a king, you know, for us as a brand, being a king is something we live mentally, physically, and spiritually, you know, and that's what kind of makes us different. Uh, we use a V instead of an I in king, because, you know, everybody can be a king, but that V represents living a lifestyle, you know, mentally, physically, and spiritually, you know, yeah. doing doing good and giving back, you know what I'm saying? So, can you kind of tell us where you got your name, King Prodigy, from? Man, I feel that. Hey, shout out to King Brand, man, because everybody can't be a king. Everybody ain't kings and everybody ain't queens, man. Kings and queens is only meant for a certain type of people. Mm -hmm. You see, I, I rocked the star David for a reason, you know what I mean? Hey, shout out to the real Jew, you know what I mean? Not the fake Jews or something in Israel. You know what, I mean? what is that? What does the necklace mean? Well, hey, this is the Star David, man. You know, it, Star it, has David. A, it has a lot of different meanings, a lot of different meanings, but just as a long story short, it's associated with the quote-unquote Jewish people. But the Jewish people, they're just the fake Jews over there, man. That's like, the, uh, those are the white people, the ones who's denoting it for our people, our heritage. But really, man, being a, if, you're a, if you're a dad, if they're from a transatlantic slave union, if that's how you guys got over here, you know what I mean? You got to really look into it. I mean, you come from the kingdom of Judah. That's mixed between three tribes. That's the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Levi, and the tribe of Benjamin. And these are the people of the Bible that you said the white man wrote, quote unquote. King David was a black man, a quote unquote Israelite, which was a person of color. That's a history book that was written. You know what I mean? So you got to cut out this false doctrine that's talking about the white man made the Bible, because that's not true. But you got to be smart enough to understand the truth and what was written and what was made up and what wasn't supposed to be there. But we gotta come back, come back to the truth, man. So if your father, you know, comes from slave heritage, that's what you are. So that, that's why I rock this. I wear this as a reminder okay. every day to come back to our, to keep these laws and these statutes and the commandments. Okay. And yeah, you know, what's the name of the religion again? I don't believe in religion. Okay. I, I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, you know, 
an advocate for religion because I don't believe in religion. You said it was Judaism? Yeah, Judaism. 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 Okay, yeah. yeah I, they, they put that together and turned it to a religion. They took our heritage and made it into a religion. I've, I've read into a lot of different religions, but I haven't heard much about that one. So yeah, Judaism. I definitely appreciate you bringing that up. Huh? Yeah, definitely. Definitely do some research. But that, that's pretty much, I mean, that's just what they're, uh, what they're doing in the Bible. You know what I mean? As far as... Uh, making sure you're eating clean, following the dietary commitments, you know, following, uh, make sure you're not sinning, you're not uh, doing these transgressions, make sure you're not, uh, you know, lie, cheating, and stealing. They got the Ten Great Commandments, but you got the Two Great Commandments, which is love thy father, love God, you know, with every single thing you love, your heart, your body, and your soul, which is Yahuwah, and then you love your neighbor like you love yourself. So those are the commandments you got to live by, you got to keep, you know what I mean? But okay. I don't so believe in religion. Okay, y'all heard y'all heard it first here from King Prodigy. Okay, we got we got to know you a little bit, but let's kind of fast forward to now. Uh, we, you got a new single out, yes, uh, produced by Hater Proof. Shout out Hater Proof. Shout out Hater Proof. Shout out, uh, shout out him for letting us host this interview in his yeah, studio. Like that, like that. So can you, tell, can you tell us more about that single? Hey, if you got first, I want to say if you need any beats, man, shout out to Hater Proof. Hater Proof 100, look them up. You know what I mean? Bones. Look them up on Facebook. Haterproof93 yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, Haterproof93 on YouTube, or you can look them up. Jimmy Wesley on Facebook. You know what I mean? Get you some great A production. You know what I mean? He won't do you wrong. But uh, I'm going to tell you about that money track. You know? I wrote that song right here. Right here. I was just, uh, we was out here just kicking in, you know, shooting the BS and started freestyling to this beat he dropped. I was like, man, that's so hard. And I was just like, where your money at? <laughs> the niggas was like, yeah. Y'all niggas be talking about money, so where that? Where your money at? And I was like, you know what? I do this all the time on the grind, nigga born a rap. I was like, okay. I say this shit because I love spitting facts. And we all love when she throw that back. So I was like, where your money at? Football season, so I'm sacking like a quarterback. So I was like, hey, that's it. So where your money at? And those, those are, are some at. lyrics from the single? Yeah, yeah, that's, okay. the hook on, that's a little bit of the hook. It's not the whole thing. And you guys just shot a video to that. Shout out Bray yeah, Films shout for, Bray Films, you know, for shout shooting Bray the Bray video. How, how was that? How did that go? Hey, man, it's bananas, man. They came out and supported. They came out and supported. First time I think I was gonna show up, man. It wasn't looking, <laughs> looking like that. Yeah. And then slowly but surely, a whole bunch of old people start coming. Up. I was like, damn, man, I feel like a geriatric commercial and shit. I'm like, <laughs> I'm the youngest one out here. We got all these old gray folks out here. You know, it's like gray is wisdom. Those shout out to those folks because he came out here first and represented it. And then uh, everybody else started coming out, man. And then next thing you know, we had a big ass ever reunion. So I was like, that's what's up. So it's good vibes, good yeah, vibes. Great vibes, great vibes, man. We brought food. You know, I had drinks out there, so we just have to get it in. And and Y'all be on the lookout for that. That should be dropping very soon. Yeah, very soon. Within the next week or so. For you, but any, any day now, man. Shout, uh, shout out to Brave again for that. You know, uh, Money Single dropping soon. Hater Proof on the Syndicate Project. You know, that I don't know when that project dropping, but be on the lookout for that, man. We got straight bangers. We got another banger coming out we just did called It's All Good. Shout out to my little cousin, Tere. You know what I mean? She out there did her thing on that, so. We got that TNB, that nigga B, you know, he on the product, he on the project, so. Now shout out to Slim Kells, you know what I mean, I heard you on that, one. shout out, let's keep it working, let's work. You know, Hater Proof 100, and, you know, send it to and to keep on with the music, can you kind of tell us how you and Hater Proof linked up? How, how, did, how did this connection come about? <laughs> Funny story, man, hey, he been having this down for whatever record shit, man, for quite a while, man, since I was like, what, fifth grade. So this is back in the day? Yeah, yeah, back okay. in the day, man, I've been known this cat for me my whole life. But it's actually my uh, my big cousin, my older cousin. Okay. Or whatever. So he always had this shit. I always, I always wanted to get down with the music, but he never wanted to fuck with me. <laughs> Lord, I was I'm just fucking with you. No, we just never ended up cause I doing any work, man, in the past. So I was just like, you know, and then as I got older, man, I released my project and shit. And then we just started kicking it or whatever. And then uh, he dropped a beat and was like, you know, let's see what happens. See what happens. We fucked with it. Made that way your money to add, then that was a hit, and then we made two more bankers and shit. I was like, hey, we got a we got some uh, nice work coming. So definitely be on the lookout for that Seneca product, man. That's kinda how we just linked up. You know, we we've been related, but I mean, you can't really help who we related to, but you know, as time went by and the pendulum swung, man, we got together and made some magic. So, you know, can't ain't shit you can do about that. It's it's, it's, it's got a lot of future shit coming future shit to come, man. A lot of hot shit, man. So y'all be on the lookout, man. You got a lot, got a lot of stuff coming to end off the year. We're gonna end off the year right, heading into 2019. Um, another interesting question: What do you think about the rap scene in Wichita? Can you give us insight on the rap scene in Wichita from the average person who is not from Kansas, never been to Wichita? You know, we in the middle of the map. You know, we don't have really any big major artists out of Kansas. Can you, so you can you kind of give us some insight on that? Hey, shout out to 316. Shout out to Wichita, Kansas, man. Damn, I've been uh, doing this for quite a long time, man. I've been seeing the city grow. 
I've seen it start from a whole bunch of hater, a whole bunch of na uh, nasty attitudes, a whole bunch of naysayers. You know, didn't nobody really want to support it. I've seen this slowly, slowly uh, start to get together, slowly a network start to build. Then I start seeing the bond created, and I'm like, yo, shout out to Wichita for that. You know what I mean? Because we're a very, we're a small city. We're a very small city, man, but with a big city mentality. So that means you got a whole bunch of diversity, no matter what you're doing. You got shit, eight or nine different generations of rap here. So it's crazy. So, Y'all tap in, man. A lot, yeah. lot of, lot of young talent coming out of Wichita, Kansas. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of talent, a lot of young talent, a lot of old talent, a lot of. You know, all right talent, a lot of hot talent, a lot of whack talent. You know, <laughs> a little bit of everything, huh? Yeah, a little bit of everything. Depending on what you're feeling, man. You got to stop through, you know, no matter where you're going. If you're in Florida trying to get to, uh, you know, Cal uh, what, California, you got to pass through Kansas. So we kind of like the, uh, I don't know, we kind of like the gel of the, uh, the whole, what, USA. We gel all that shit together, I mean, a little bit of everything. Take a little bit of the South, a little bit of the East Coast, a little bit of the West Coast. A little bit of north, a little bit of south, and you just the Midwest. Shit together, man. They say all together, put in the pot like some gumbo. You know, shout out to Tech Nine, man. He's still spearheading the movement. Uh, King Prodigy's on the scene now, my nigga. So, about ten years, uh, we'd be back out here, you know, having a whole different conversation. Y'all, y'all heard it here first. Yeah. All right, to get into a more serious topic, man. You know, one of the staples of King Brand is getting back in the community, man. And I was wanting to know if you had any ideas on how we can. Uh, give back in the community or just overall how can we better our people how can we do better as black men in the community how can we do better <clears throat> how can we do better man well we got to come back to the truth we definitely got to keep our faith in you know the most time you know to do it uh, to him man everything is possible, everything is possible. That, is definitely how we, that is definitely how we become better people but as far as what we can do right now in, in the flesh man uh, i think we really need to focus on giving back or doing something for our children Doing something for the kids. The youth. Was, yeah, the youth, man. The youth is our future. I mean, that's a real true saying. I remember when I was a kid, man, I used to uh, take out the trash. And in the backyard, man, I used to practice on the back porch. It was a pretty big back porch. So I used to practice on the back porch like I was performing in front of thousands of people. If we can, uh, you know, strengthen up our recreation systems, if we can uh, build stages, or if we can do something to kind of help our kids create you know, an avenue to get to their goal, to reach their dream, to let them know it is obtainable. More opportunities. Yeah, more opportunities, more opportunities. You know, uh, it's enough money here, so I mean, why not spread it a little bit out a little bit more to where you ain't lying about that. You know, so let's dial back on our self improvement spending and uh, try to uh, come together as a community and actually uh, do something. You know, that way we can kind of uh, dial down on the murders, you know. We can help our kids, uh, you know, obtain their future and reach their goals. You know, that's def that's definitely what it's about, right? Because I mean, at this point, we're too old to try to change something. We can change something, but we need to focus on our future. What can we do to help them, you know, have a better uh, future? Yeah, uh, I, d I definitely I like that. I like that that response. Do you have any shout outs you want to give out to the people out there as as we wrap up the interview? Yeah, man. Shout out to uh, shout out to Fly Capital Entertainment. You know, shout out to the Most High. You know, I appreciate every single breath that I'm allowed to take, you know, in order to reach this journey. You know, every day I pray for understanding, I pray for clarity. You know, uh, through those prayers, man, you'll be able to take over. So, uh, shout out to, shout out to Most High for allowing me this opportunity. Shout out to my mother. Hey, shout out to King Brand, man. I appreciate this opportunity. Appreciate you, man. Show. Appreciate you. You know, straight up. Uh, you know, shout out to uh, Hater Proof 100. You know, Seneca product on the way. You know, major moves out now, King Prodigy. Shout out to T and B man for that money track. Uh, shout out to my little cousin Teray. You know what I mean? Hey, I got a lot of other shout outs here, man. But I'm just gonna end it right there because those are the people right now that's more important. Shout out to, like I said, shout out to my mother. You know, most importantly, shout so, out to you. Shout out to all the moms out there, shout man. Out to all the moms out there. You know, shout out to all y'all. You know, keep it pushing. Shout out to my little sister, my twin sister. Still my little sister though, but shout out to you. <laughs> shout out to my older brother. You know, you know which one I'm talking about, man. Appreciate what you've been doing. So. Let's keep pushing. All right, appreciate your time, King yeah, no Prodigy, doubt, man. man. No doubt, Stay King blessed, Prodigy. my brother, and be on the lookout for more music from my man. No doubt, Doug K, where it's at. King Prodigy, baby, moves out now.